All right, so we're going to talk about uncertainty. I'm going to make it as quick and as effective as possible. Also, the first thing is uh, how do we calculate uncertainties or uh, finding uncertainties based on what? So uncertainties can be based on um, primarily three things. So what are the three things that we can use? Number one is uncertainty of devices. Number two is um, uncertainty of ranges. And number three is uncertainty of equations. So we're going to be using these three. They're very strongly related with each other. And uh, alongside these, we have to also learn three other things, the types of uncertainty. So the types are absolute, fractional, and percentage. So we're going to talk about these. First, we're going to talk about the devices and how we get uncertainties. Then we're going to talk about these types of uncertainties. All right. So first of all, uncertainty of devices. So let's make this really quick and really simple. If you have a meter rule, the smallest division of a meter rule is one millimeter, which means if you look at it really closely, this would be, say, 10 centimeters. This would be 10.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, point, uh, sorry, yeah, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So say, for example, there's a string which starts from here. So you can call this either 10.3 or 10.4. And some people will also call it 10.5. Sorry, 10.35. They're all correct. So that basically means if we were to state this value with its uncertainty, you have to understand that there can be no value without an uncertainty. There's always an uncertainty in any value you use. So if we were to mention the uncertainty in this, we can write the value is 10.3 plus minus 0.1, basically the smallest division of the meter rule. Or we can also write 10.35 plus minus 0 0.05. Both are correct. Whichever method you use, it depends as long as you're using the same concept throughout the entire question paper. The logic is here, you can say 0.1 because that's the smallest division, and you can say 0 0.05 because you can say, I can use at least up to uh, at most half of the smallest division. So whichever way you use, it's all right. But the thing is, we're measuring the length of something, which means what? There's another reading on the other end. So they say this is like, you know, 4.3. So if this is 4.3, then you're going to have the same thing going on here. It's going to be 4, uh, sorry, it's going to be 4.3 plus minus either 0.1 or you can say say 4.30 mind it that you have to always have the same number of decimal places for your absolute uncertainty and uh, we'll get to that in a little more detail later plus minus 0 0.05 so if you use this on one end you have to use the same one on the other end so say for example I personally prefer using the 0 0.051 but it, it doesn't matter we can write this as in any form so if we use this the first value then it would be 6.0 plus minus 0.2 and if we use the other value, then it's going to be 6.00 plus minus 0.1 centimeters, right? So whichever method you use, again, it's all right. So you can use the same concept in any device. As long as the device takes two readings, you have to take either uh, the smallest reading or the smallest reading times two. So for a meter rule, it's one millimeter, the smallest division. So basically, you can say 0.1 or 0.2. For a vernier, it would be 0.1 millimeters. For a micrometer, it would be 0 0.01 millimeters, and so on and so forth. If it's a beaker or a graduated cylinder or a burette, it would be two times the smallest division or just the smallest division. Both are correct. It is important to take in consideration when you're using a stopwatch for any sort of time, uh, you have to be aware of the fact that you have to consider human reaction time also. So if the stopwatch measures up to the closest hundredth of a second, it's actually not something that is going to uh, the biggest cause of uncertainty the actual largest cause of uncertainty is going to be human reaction time so it can be any one any value from 0.1 to 0.4 seconds please check this because it varies from syllabus to syllabus and also from context to context each equation might have different values so this is how we get uncertainty from our devices and we can extend this into any sort of device we want to go into second is the uncertainty of ranges Uncertainty of range is very simple. Say, for example, if we have a set of values 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, all right? So they didn't give you, say, the device that you use, but they ask for the absolute uncertainty or the range of the values. So what you do is here you find the average value, which is very straightforward. In this case, it's going to be 7. Plus, minus, now you have to set a value which actually selects all of these when it's its range. So it's going to be how much? The furthest is plus 2. The smallest, the furthest on the other side is minus 2. So we can say 7 plus minus 2. What if they said 9 and then say we stick to our average of 7, but the value goes up to 10? Right, obviously the value average is going to be different, but I'm trying to show an example here that one side goes further than the other side from our average value. Then what would you do? Um, what you would have to do in this case, you would have to write 7 plus minus 3 because you would have to include the 10. This does exceed it on this side, but it doesn't matter. You have to always consider the furthest value. So you can do this calculation in two ways. You can either find the average, whichever value it is, and then you see how far it is from the furthest value, or you can take the highest and the lowest, and you divide it by 2. 
so you get 2.5, right? But you can't write 2.5 because there's no decimal places here. The values have to be equal to the uh, precision of these values, right? So that's the second process by which you can actually calculate uncertainties from ranges. Be very careful whenever they give an outlier, for example, 25. So this value would not be considered in the calculation because this is an experimental error. Outliers can be very easily identified based on how far they are from the set of values. When it's too far away, it's very easily identified as an outlier. In this case, it's 2 to 300 percent. So that's all right also. The third method of uncertainties is finding uncertainties via equations. For example, we'll write this really simply using percentage uncertainties. Say you use the equation kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. M, is say, has a given uncertainty of 2%, and V has a given uncertainty of 1%. So this relates to the propagation of uncertainties, or basically how uncertainties add up. So whenever there's a multi percentage, whenever there's a multiplication, you have to add their uncertainty. So if we break this equation, you can write half into m into v into v. So whenever it's a multiplication or a division, which includes uh, powers, like for example, square here. So half is a constant, so it doesn't have any uncertainty in it. m has an uncertainty of 2, plus v has an uncertainty of 1, plus v again has an uncertainty of 1. So the value, the kinetic energy will have an uncertainty of 4%. This is how you can calculate uncertainties from value, from equations. And this extrapolates, this extends into any sort of equation. You can use it accordingly. Just remember that the coefficient or the constants don't have uncertainties, and the other uncertainties depend on the power. So if this was a root, if this was a root, then you would, instead of adding it twice, you would divide it by 2. So that's the thing. But you never subtract. Uncertainty is never subtracted. Even if it was, uh, say, a division, say density is equal to mass by volume. So uh, this V is volume, that V is velocity. Mass is, say, 3% uncertainty in this situation, and volume has an uncertainty of 2%. It is not 3 divided by 2 or 3 minus 2. It's actually 3 plus 2 because uncertainties never, ever get subtracted. They always add up. So the density has an uncertainty of 5%. That's that. Now we're going to quickly talk about act, absolute fractional and percentage uncertainties. It's really short, really quick. So absolute uncertainty is, for example, if, if we take the examples we used here, an absolute uncertainty would be this value here. The absolute uncertainty always has the same unit. So if we say 10.3 plus minus 0.1, this is going to be in centimeters. This is an absolute uncertainty. This is how you find it. You can express it as an equation x, sorry, x plus minus del x. Please bear in mind, when you write absolute uncertainties, the decimal places on both sides must be the same. And uh, if you do, if you give, for example, two decimal places here, this must be two decimal places, or else the uncertainty doesn't hold any meaning. And similarly, if I write, say, 10 plus minus 0 0.05, this doesn't hold any meaning either, because it doesn't have the same number of decimal places. Whenever we write 10, we're saying the value is actually anywhere from 9.5 to 10.4. So we're already in a huge uncertainty range, so this doesn't mean anything. 10.3 actually means the value is from 10.25 to 10.35, but we won't get into too much detail about that. So absolute uncertainty is this, and it is its unit. So that is absolute uncertainty. Second is fractional uncertainty, which is which we can use this e example again. It's going to be 0.1 divided by 10.3, all right? So this is our fractional uncertainty, and the moment you multiply it with 100%, it becomes percentage uncertainty. So fractional and percentage uncertainty is very easy to use. All right, rule of thumb. Whenever you add values, x plus y, for example, x has an uncertainty of del x, y has an uncertainty of del y, you add absolute uncertainties. All right, so that basically means uh, del x plus del y. Del y. If it's subtraction x minus y, you do the same thing again. Add absolute uncertainties, it's again del x plus del y. Remember that. If it's multiplication, for example, x into y, you add fractional or percentage uncertainties, like the example I showed previously with the equation of kinetic energy. So it's going to be, if we were to write it as an equation, it would be del x by x plus del y by y. If you want to X turn this back into absolute uncertainty, you have to multiply it with the value that you get for x into y. And the same rule follows for division. You again add fractional uncertainties or percentage uncertainties, and you get del x by x plus del y by y. There is never a subtraction during these. These are also called the propagation of uncertainties. You can extend this into x squared, which would be x times x, which is basically the percentage of uncertainty of x into 2. All right, the next thing. For example, if you take the diameter of a circle and you measure it, and say the diameter is 10 plus minus 2 uh, meters, all right? So here, if we were to find the uncertainty in the radius, all right, we would basically have to divide this by 2. So it would be, the radius would be 5 meters. 
and the uncertainty in this would decrease similarly the absolute uncertainty absolute uncertainty decreases but percentage uncertainty never changes for example this has a percentage uncertainty of 20 percent the radius will also have a percentage uncertainty of 20 percent which what does decrease is the absolute the percentage uncertainty remains unchanged that is how we do these calculations for radius and you can extend this into diameter and everything and also area whichever way you would like all right so that is the basics of uncertainty straightforward i'll just add a few more things with this and then we're done uh, the concept of percentage difference and percentage error for example they love asking this thing there was the percentage difference between the value and a true value so whenever it's a true value and they're very clear about it for example the value of g we know the true value is 9.81 so say you do a calculation and you find 11 meters per second squared or 11.25 so how would you find the true uh, uh, the percentage difference between the two or percentage error this is the true value this is your calculated value you need to find the difference it's going to be 11.25 minus 9.81 divided by the true value which is 9.81 into percentage right so this is going to be how you find the percentage error because you know which one's the true value if you didn't know which one's the true value you would have to divide this by the average of the two that would give you percentage difference in experience we usually consider a 10 percent or depends 10 to 20 or 15 percent uh, error all right so if it is within this range say for example the value of g is within 10 percent of 9.81 then we consider the experiment to be accurate another way of determining this is you use your equations and an uncertainty and figure out how much is your uncertainty of the experiment if the experiment has an uncertainty of say 70 percent You'll have to find this from previous steps of the question. If it is within 17%, then we know that there is no extra error. This is just due to the limitations of your device. If it's more than 17%, and say your values have a difference of 40%, then you know that an experimental error was done. This is how you do these calculations. And this is similar, for example, say they use, they tell you that the density of a metal is uh, X uh, kg per meter cube. And you did a calculation to find the density of a specific block of metal. And the experiment had, say, 17% error. So you find the difference between your two values, the table value, the value of the metal given, and your calculated value. If it's less than 17% difference between the two, then you know that it is actually that metal. And if you say you get a similarly large value, like we got for G, then you could say that this is not this metal because the percentage difference exceeds the percentage uncertainty. So yeah, this is the shortest I can do uncertainty in. There's a lot more that is related to uncertainty, but uh, first get these basics sorted out, and then you'll have the most done. So yeah, thank you and uh, best of luck with your exams.